What's going on everybody? I'm Jory Goodman, the time teller, and you can only see my hands, which means it's time for another unboxing and review. So for today's installment of Microbrand Monday, we're gonna do something a little different, okay? At the top of this episode, I'm gonna list a few watches, and we're gonna see what they all have in common because they're actually all related to the watch we're gonna be taking a look at today. So here's a picture of an Omega Speedmaster X33 Regatta. Uh, here is a Frederic Constant Yacht Timer Regatta. Here's a Panerai Luminor Luna Rossa Regatta. And uh, oh yeah, we can't forget the Rolex Yacht Master 2. And the Hoyer Regatta. We should probably show a picture of that as well. What do all these watches have in common? Well, they all have the word regatta in the name. And uh, yeah, they're all yacht timers, regatta timers. They all have to do with the fan fancy schmancy sport of racing yachts. Well, today on this episode, we have a regatta timer, the first one I've ever had, and it's from Boulder. That's right, this is a hyper-limited watch. It's going to be limited to 100 pieces, and it is dang impressive when you take a look at the spec sheets and this is a complication, again, I've never owned, I've never reviewed, so uh, let's just tear into this box. It is. 1.39 p.m., let's get down to business. All right, guys, we have another Boulder to review. Now, you know, uh, I, I make no bones about it. Boulder is one of my favorite micro brand watchmakers at this current time. They just make consistently impressive, just solid watches and things that are often right up my alley. Uh, but again, <laughs> this is not just a normal boulder. This is not going to be just some field watch, and it's not just gonna be some diver. Let's open this kind of Pelican-esque hard case. That does say Boulder Supply Co. And let's take a look at what's inside. Oh, it's still clipped there. So uh, to talk about the packaging, again, kind of a hard pelican type case. Uh, we have some nice fluffy foam. We have the watch that we're gonna talk about, obviously, but let's take a look at what would be in here. Don't worry, I can handle the dirt. That's what this little microfiber square says. Again, guys, I have links to uh, some microfiber squares at the Time Teller Amazon store uh, down in the description below. I think every watch collector should have some microfiber squares for sure. All right, some Boulder Supply Co. marketing. We're glad you're on board with the Boulder Collective. Um, we have some more kind of social media marketing with a QR code thing. Oh, something to put on your hydro flask. A, what I assume to be, yep, a like serial number guarantee card thing. And a probably instruction booklet that I am notoriously never going to read. All right, let's take a look at the watch. Uh-oh, got a whole bunch of plastic. You know what we gotta do, but first, this is for your freaks out there. Oh yeah, all right. Gato, start the music. All right guys, so now that at least most, if not all, that protective plastic is removed, I can finally introduce to you the Boulder Odyssey Regatta. So for my longtime viewers, you will know I reviewed a Boulder Odyssey diver like way early at the beginning of my channel. So what makes this one so dang special? Well, as you can see, there's a few little different boops and bops here on the dial and on the side of the case. And that's because this utilizes a Valju ETA 7750 chronograph movement. That's a 25 joule automatic movement. And uh, yeah, it has a regatta timer. So it's a very interesting, unique complication that I don't know if I personally will ever use. I've, I've never had the fortune of owning a yacht or 
racing a yacht for that matter, but uh, if I ever do, then I will be prepared. So typically when we're taking a look at various regatta timer watches, you will see the very common dial layout of five dots on the dial, and that's because, to my understanding, these yacht races function in five minute intervals when we're talking about the starting point of the race. Now, I'm gonna focus here up by the 12 o'clock and we're gonna take a look at this black disc. But right before we talk about the regatta timer, I do wanna bring up that just by handling the watch for a few minutes to get it in frame, the second hand has come alive and we can see with this mini register by the nine o'clock, uh, this would be your running seconds. And thanks to that Valju ETA 7750, uh, it is a very smooth 28,800 BPH sweep. This watch has about a 48 hour power reserve. And of course it does accommodate a day date complication, which we will focus in on in a moment. But I do want to talk about this very unique register up by the 12 o'clock. So let's go hone in on that. So here we are over by the 10 minute count disc as Boulder refers to it. And I'm just going to push the top pusher like I would with any other chronograph. And we can see that chronograph hand is sweeping very smoothly across the dial. But I want to focus in on these markers that border this 10 minute count disc, 1086420. And of course that nice splash of blue and red, which is very common uh, with regatta timers. And as this chronograph hand makes a full cycle across the dial, we will see that 10 minute disc uh, start to count down, which is very, very cool. And again, unique. So this isn't just your average chronograph. It kind of has a very specific function and it's fun to see watches that are true tools uh, dedicated to an actual function. Um, again, will I ever use this to race a yacht? Probably not, but it is cool to have a watch like this and to be able to kind of study it and learn uh, about these various watches. So here we go. Yep, we will see it count down. Now we are at nine minutes and so on and so forth. Let's go ahead and take a look at the day date complication. So as we focus in on this day date complication, we can see the Friday and the fifth are nicely centered in that nicely bordered day date window. Would I have liked a color matched date wheel? Maybe, I think that it is highly visible with that contrast, but you know me. Yeah, I kind of like the sleek stealthiness of color matched date wheels, but I don't know, that might be that might be asking too much. I mean, this watch already does a whole lot. I do like the raised Odyssey Regatta font and I like the raised Boulder font and logo, but I do see an imperfection because my macro lens spares no one. Gato, can you circle it for me? Yeah, right above the spindle, right by the chronograph hand. I thought it was on top of the crystal, but unfortunately it's right underneath the crystal. Let's go ahead and focus in on this. Yep, right here. A little fleck of something, very difficult to see with your naked eyes, but again, this camera is very unforgiving. So I love Boulder. Again, one of my favorite micro brand manufacturers, but they aren't impervious uh, to having imperfections. So guys, we see it right here. Uh, I'm going to obviously bring this up to Boulder. Boulder uh, knows I'm making this review. So uh, yeah, this is something they could absolutely work on. Now here's something I'm very interested in. This watch almost has like a fume pattern on the dial, but it's with actual texture. So it's like a texture gradient, if you will. So closer to the chapter ring markers, you will see it's very rough. But then as we move closer into the spindle, it kind of smooths out a bit. So again, it's kind of a fume gradient, but with tangible texture. Now, here's the bummer about having a really nice matte black dial. I said in my Pagani design episode where they sent me that white dial Daytona homage, uh, white will show off imperfections, but black is much less forgiving. So as we can see, it like contrasts with that little speck. So anywhere we focus in on, that speck just sticks out like a sore thumb. And again, that's the problem with clean black dials. They show off every little bit. So to the watchmakers out there, 
make sure there aren't little bits on the dial and you'll be fine. Down here towards the six o'clock register, we can see a nice spiralized pattern. Again, this watch really does utilize textures very nicely, uh, kind of playing with borders and a texture gradient and spiralized textures and raised markers. Um, it just, you know, looks very nice altogether and the handset. That's right, we cannot forget about the detailing on the handset. We can see some really nice matte black texturing over towards the handset closer to the spindle, but then we see a nice pop of white with these skeletonized hands giving really high visibility to all the registers and everything going on on the dial. Uh, but again, as we focus in here, we can see that dang spec, it is such a shame. So we're going to let this chronograph hand tick away for a moment and maybe some of you would like to take a look at that regatta timer. We're going to talk about the specs all together. So again, Swiss made Valju ETA 7750 chronograph movement. We are getting a day date complication of 500 meter water resistance rating with a helium escape valve on the side of the case, which we will show you right here. Uh, this watch does have a triple lock screw down crown. So I don't think it's like Rolex trip lock system, but it's probably something fairly similar. We're gonna go ahead and take a look at that. This watch does use a sapphire crystal double domed with three layers of anti-reflective coating on the underside. As I said, this is limited to 100 pieces at $14.99 each. This is not an inexpensive watch. Now, when you compare it to some of these other Swiss made regatta timers, especially like the Yachtmaster 2, oh, well, this watch is an absolute steal. But it's not what I would consider necessarily an entry level diver. Is it an entry level regatta timer? Maybe, but how many of you guys are actually, you know, looking to absolutely have a regatta timer as a requirement? for your wristwatch. I don't know, that's something that you're going to have to decide. Now, what I will say is when we're taking a look at regatta timers as a whole, this is probably one of the most competent as far as the functionality. I mean, not a lot of regatta timers out there have a 500 meter water resistance rating with a helium escape valve. That's just, you know, it is what it is. Now, as we zoom out a little bit, we can talk about the dimensions with this watch's 316L stainless steel case. It has a 45.5 millimeter diameter. It is 18.2 millimeters thick when you're including that crystal. And it has a 52 millimeter lug to lug, so this is by no means a small boy. This is what I would call a thick boy. Uh, quite like myself. So, this watch, I'm gonna say right now, especially when we're taking into consideration the lug to lug, if you have wrists smaller than seven and a half inches, I probably would not even consider this watch. It is going to be enormous on you. But for reference, let's go ahead and put it on my seven and a half inch wrist. So here it is guys. Even with my seven and a half inch wrist, this watch is big, okay? It is probably bigger than I would want to wear on a regular basis. Uh, the bracelet is comfortable. We're gonna talk about that in a moment. However, with this watch plus its bracelet, it's just a lot. I would probably take this off and put it on some like rubber diving strap or, or actually sailcloth would probably be, probably be incredible in my opinion, excuse me. Um, but yeah, this with the bracelet, again, 18.2 millimeters thick. It's just a whole lot of watch. So if you have wrists smaller than mine, Probably stay away, but if you have wrists larger than mine, and again, a lot of people out there have much bigger wrists than myself, uh, this would be great for you guys. But yeah, not the most versatile of watches as far as wearability. Now talking about this bracelet, uh, really solid links here. Very comfortable, not a hair puller. Man, I wish you could feel how slick and smooth uh, the underside of these links are. It just lays on your wrist so nicely. Doesn't have that binding issue that that Pagani design bracelet had. All the links are really mobile and comfortable, but again, not a hair puller, and I am a pretty hairy dude, as many of my hate mail messages say. Oh, you're too hairy and disgusting. Oh. Um, let's talk about this clasp. Pretty standard clasp here, does have Boulder with the Boulder logo. You have some added retention here and you have six micro adjustments, but no like ratcheting system or divers extension, but you know, enough real estate for you thick boys out there for sure. Um, let's go ahead. We'll talk about the crown setting and function and that bezel actuation. Oh, and here's that helium escape valve. 
Very cool. Again, thick boy. Thick boy! Okay, so as we take a look at this crown setting and function, I do want to mention uh, these pushers are not threaded. Okay, so it does look like there's like serrations here to thread them. Uh, that's more of like a design cue. It's, it's not really functional at all. Now the signed crown, oversized size crown, uh, this is very bolder of them. I know on the other Odyssey it utilizes serrations like this, and this does give you some nice real st or nice purchase, I should say, on uh, the crown. You're not going to be slipping and sliding. Very smooth. Up, oh, and we can see a gasket there. Let's thread it back in real quick. Yeah, very smooth with a definite stop there, so that's good. Let's see if we can feel the two crown settings. One, two, yep, two very distinct clicks. Yep, very good. So not a sloppy crown at all. Let's talk about the bezel. So when we take a look at most diving watches, uh, we're used to like unidirectional rotating timing bezels, right? That's like the most common thing. Sometimes with GMT watches, you'll get bi-directional rotating bezels. And that's what this watch uses, okay? A bi-directional rotating bezel. Uh, 60 click ceramic showing off your nautical miles. Uh, let's see how it feels. Definite clicks. No real play. A tad bit, but it's not sloppy by any means. Yeah, I dig it, very functional. What I will say if there's one uh, gripe is that they could use maybe a bit more serrations. Like if, if they had this overall chunky serration uh, pattern, but they added maybe like a coin edge like within each one, that would probably give you a little bit better purchase on that bezel. Cause even with my hands, which are totally dry, uh, slips a tiny bit. So that would be one, my one complaint, but you know, comment in the comment section below if you agree or disagree. Do you, do you kind of see what I mean? Um, but yeah, the thing is the finishing's so nice and everything, everything's smooth and sharp where it should be uh, that it's, it's, yeah, a little bit slick there. And guys, lo and behold, the countdown has been completed and it tells us to start. So we have officially begun our yacht race. Very, very cool. Um, yeah, I love it. Again, kind of a unique complication, not something that we would ever use day to day, but it's fun, it's funky. And uh, I love to see watches that are actually designed with a specific like function in mind, um, whether it be physician's watch or something as silly and, and I don't know, um, opulent as a regatta yacht timer. Now we can see a screw down case back here with an engraving, you know, Boulder always has something fun going on on their case back. And we can see that nautical theme carrying over here. Odyssey regatta, 500 meter. Uh, let's see, this is number 34 out of 100, automatic. And where does it say? Valjoux 7750 Sapphire, very cool. And we see some quick release spring bars here that are retained in those end links. So if I did want to put it on like a Barton uh, canvas or a sailcloth strap, I could do so very easily. All right, let's do a loom test. All right, guys, so I have all the lights off. It is pitch black in here and it's already glowing. I can see some loom on the bezel markings. I can see the indexes and the handset glowing. But let's go ahead and shine it with this UV torch. And it's pretty dang vibrant. We can see again, uh, the bezel very detailed and every little bit is shining nice and true. Indexes and handset. Again, I love that the skeletonized handset has a bunch of loom on it. And uh, just a quick little shot of that UV torch really gets it glowing very nicely. And uh, yeah, again, kind of a blue hue and um, pretty dang vibrant again. Green tends to shine better for a longer period of time, but blue loom, uh, kind of hit or miss. This happens to be a hit. All right, dudes and dudettes, we've spent an afternoon with the Boulder Odyssey Regatta. What do I think? Well, it is very unique. 
Okay, I think it is a very fun watch. You know, I started this episode with a Seiko Tuna SBBN 031 on my wrist, which is a behemoth of a watch all in itself, but this is just something totally different. With that Valju ETA 7750 chronograph movement, again, it is automatic. It has more material within the watch. It's just bigger when we're taking a look at the overall dimensions. It's just a honker of a watch with that bracelet. It, it, it's a whole lot of watch here. And I think it's very, very well done as far as the overall finishing, okay? Everything we took a look at from the dial to the bezel uh, to the actuation of the crown and the pushers, everything felt real nice. The one downside is that the spec sheet could be perfect, the functionality could be there, everything could look nice when, with the fit and finish, but with that one spec under the crystal, it kind of, it's just, it makes me so disappointed, okay? This is limited to 100 pieces. It's well over $1,000 each. We cannot be having sediment under the crystal. We can't. We just simply can't. It's hard to validate that price point when there are imperfections like that. So Boulder very generously uh, like sent this watch for me to keep. I'm actually gonna go ahead and send this back to Boulder so that they can take a look at this and maybe see how it happened. Um, and I really do appreciate Boulder support. You know, they don't pay me. Uh, they have gifted me, you know, Boulder Expedition. I think they gifted me um, a Boulder Venture in the past. Um, but, you know, I've also voluntarily purchased Boulder watches. That's how they actually uh, noticed me was because I was a fan of their products before I was, uh, you know, as big as I am here in the watch world, if you want to say that. But, um, yeah, you know, it's a company I like overall. They make products I like, but we got to point out the good with the bad. So th there is an imperfection on this watch that I think is not okay at all. Like it, that would bother me. That would bother, especially someone that likes to video watches, that likes to photo watches. You know, I'm always on Instagram taking pics of my watches, macro shots, everything. I just, I, I couldn't take these close looks at these the, this watch with that imperfection there. So that's something that we have to take into consideration. But I'd love to hear what your take on this is, guys. Uh, do you have any regatta timer watches? Have you ever been involved in a yacht race? Let me know and uh, let me know which watch you have. Yeah, leave me a comment. You know, with the algorithm, the comments are helping out a ton. So I really do appreciate it. And uh, yeah, guys, thanks for hanging out with me on this installment of Micro Brand Monday. I will see you on the next one. Guys, there's a whole bunch of ways to support the channel. We just did another restock at the Time Teller Shop. Uh, it's probably one of the best restocks yet, honestly. Some incredible timepieces over there. We're coming out with some more t-shirt designs. We have a bunch of affiliate links in the description below. Uh, just, yeah, tons of ways to support the channel. And I wanna thank every single one of my viewers and my channel members. All right, guys, stay happy, stay healthy, stay blessed. I'm Jory Goodman, the Time Teller. And always remember, I didn't invent time. I just tell it. Yeah, yeah, yeah.